but it is all straight out of Blood Meridian because Blood Meridian is the ultimate Western. Blood Meridian is often considered Cormac McCarthy's best, finest, and most epic novel. There have been multiple attempts to adapt this novel since it was published in the 80s, and up to this moment, every single one of them has failed for a variety of reasons. Lots of talented people from Tommy Lee Jones to Ridley Scott have tried to make this movie happen, and none of them have been able to. The farthest along it got was actually, surprisingly, by uh, auteur James Franco most famous for the interview and playing Harry Osborn in Spider-Man 3. So good. More on him later. The novel, though, is currently undergoing another attempt at being made into a film, and this time it is being helmed by director John Hillcoat. Now, the reason I think this potential adaptation stands out from the previous ones is because Hillcoat actually has experience adapting McCarthy novels. Most notably, uh, Hillcoat adapted The Road, a couple of years ago, about a, about a decade ago now, starring uh, Viggo Mortensen and then um, the, the kid who eventually played Nightcrawler in the X-Men movies, Cody Smith McPhee. That's it. And you know what? The Road is uh, a pretty, pretty solid film. It's an incredible novel and the film is good. It's got its moments, but the film doesn't come anywhere near the novel in terms of uh, effectiveness and how the story is conveyed. And I bring this up because The Road is structured very similarly to Blood Meridian, both in terms of how it's written and how the, the, the novel and the story progresses. Now, The Road is different in the fact that it's way more accessible both on an emotional level and kind of comprehension wise. I think The Road is also a lot easier to adapt than Blood Meridian. And despite the fact that Hillcoat gave us probably the best possible adaptation of The Road that we could ever get, it again still falls short when compared to the novel. And I think that an adaptation of Blood Meridian would likely fare even worse because the novel is just so much more complicated. To return to Mr. James Franco, he's also notable for adapting uh, kind of modernist, postmodernist novels by significant authors such as John Steinbeck and perhaps more recognizably William Faulkner. He adapted not only The Sound and The Fury, but also As I Lay Dying. But this is a book that I would consider unadaptable, and yet James Franco adapted it. Was his adaptation as well received as The Road? No. Should it have been? No. I bring this up because I think The Sound and the Fury is one of the unadaptable novels in capital letters, yet it has still gotten an adaptation that for the most part is pretty faithful to the original work. I know a lot of people like absolutely hate Franco's adaptation, and I understand why. It definitely doesn't work on a lot of levels, but to me personally watching that film, I never got the impression that Franco didn't like or understand the text. I think he definitely tried to create the most faithful adaptation he possibly could. It's just that his directing and writing style, I don't think is very well equipped for adapting this kind of story. And I don't know that he quite has the, the skill necessary to do so. And to be honest, I don't know that any writer or director has the skill to adapt this novel without fundamentally changing it or making their film just basically inaccessible to anyone who is not intimately familiar with the text. Which begs the question that if a adaptation cannot be successful no matter how well loved or how much hard work is put into it, should that adaptation even be made? When we're talking about unadaptable text though, something that really comes to mind for me is structure. Structure is important both in film and in, in, in writing, like obviously that's the floor is made of floor. But something like The Sound and the Fury, or even Blood Meridian, is so dependent on its structure for what makes that story worth reading and unique and uh, stylistic, and also, again, is integral for how the characters are developed, that if you change the structure of those works when adapting to film, you have fundamentally, I think, broken a part of the novel. However, something like The Sound and the Fury or Blood Meridian is very difficult to adapt while following that same type of structure. To me, that is what unadaptable means. A lot of people use unadaptable to describe something that is huge in scope, that has a lot of characters, a lot of different locations, that is maybe very complex, that has a lot of large-scale sequences, something like Game of Thrones or Wheel of Time or Lord of the Rings. To me, those are not unadaptable simply because the scale is too large. Like, at this point in time, we can adapt pretty much anything, regardless of size and scale and scope. Now, you might have to tweak a few things and clean up a few loose story ends to make it fit into a more cohesive filmic or television story, but those are still adaptable. One of the largest challenges, apparently, in adapting Blood Meridian is the fact that it is too violent. 
I believe that is what threw off both the Tommy Lee Jones and Ridley Scott adaptations. It's not exactly clear what happened to James Franco's adaptation. Maybe he just decided that it was too much for him in terms of scale because that is significantly larger than anything he's worked on. But to me, while reading the book, I don't think the violence is what makes it necessarily unadaptable. We see incredible, uh, incredibly gruesome depictions of violence in some of the most popular forms of media that are enjoyed by people everywhere. For instance, The Boys or Game of Thrones are both extremely violent and yet extremely successful. People love violence, blood and guts sells like it always has. I think the issue is the structure in which that violence is portrayed in Blood Meridian and the disassociation that the characters have from it. And again, this specifically goes back to the structure. Blood Meridian follows the journey of a character known simply as the kid. And while he does have development and like his actions are symbolic and represent things, I think that on a first fairly shallow reading, the kid appears as mostly a flat character who is largely lacking in depth or development or reflection or characterization. I don't think that's true. Like, I, again, I do think that there is depth to this character, but because Cormac McCarthy's prose is so detached from the actual ruminations of the character, a lot of times he and the others come across as simply more of archetypes than actual people. The biggest exception is the judge, who is the villain of the piece and one of Cormac McCarthy's most lauded creations. The judge is extremely well developed because he does so much monologuing. It's easy for the reader to get in his headspace. That said, there is of course a lot more going on beneath the surface of what he says. Again, his actions are important, his appearance is important, you know, all of that. But I think the judge is almost an easier character to latch onto than the kid because he's such a bigger personality. The kid is not necessarily a blank slate, but he could almost be a self-insert character because he doesn't even have a name. Again, he's sort of an archetype in the way that a lot of the Jodes are, like Paw and Ma Jode in The Grapes of Wrath. And he simply reacts to things. I mean, he does make decisions and he complains about things he doesn't like, but largely things are happening around him. He's swept onto this journey really without too much of a say in it. So he's a difficult protagonist to particularly like empathize with because he's a product of his time and environment, which are not very nice things. I think that a story like this is definitely doable. For instance, one of my favorite films that I love to talk about all the time, Hostiles, starring Christian Bale, is extremely violent and focuses on a similar time period and similar issues. But Christian Bale's character is very uh, sympathetic, whereas the kid is largely silent, stoic, and simply depressed all the time, as are the characters surrounding him. So I think that that structure and that disconnectedness between the narrator and the protagonist is really where some of the difficulty in the novel comes from. This was done somewhat in the road, but again, um, the, the father or the man, whatever you want to call the protagonist of the road, Vega Mortensen's character, is a lot more emotionally accessible because he has a pretty clear and understandable goal. He wants to keep his son alive. The kid does not have anywhere near as simple of a goal in the novel. If you really want to boil the kid down to his bare goal, it's to, I guess, make money and survive. But he's still taking part in witnessing these terrible atrocities that in the modern world, we cannot even begin to comprehend. Not to mention that the road also ends with some glimmers of hope and prospects for salvation. Blood Meridian ends in the most terrible fashion imaginable, and I just don't really <laughs> see how to the average viewer something like that is going to necessarily appear palatable because it's going to seem like violence for the sake of violence without any kind of emotional catharsis whatsoever. In short, a large majority of the characterization and character development of Blood Meridian happens, I guess, off page would be the word for it, because characters aren't necessarily like reflecting or ruminating. We're not getting to see a lot of their thought process. We're simply seeing the actions as a result of those thought processes. With all that said, however, there are a lot of unadaptable works that have been adapted. For instance, I already mentioned something like Game of Thrones, which is considered unadaptable just because it's so large. But other works that I think are unadaptable but similar to Blood Meridian is something like A Clockwork Orange. Because this is a similarly violent novel, it's episodic and it's misery porn and it's violent. And the whole point is the, uh, the gluttonization and the gluttony of the violence, similar to Blood Meridian. Yet A Clockwork Orange has been turned into a, a wonderful film. I mean, wonderful makes it sound like it's an enjoyable jaunt, which it's not. But A Clockwork Orange by Stanley Kubrick is, it's a good, effective film. Like it sells its message well and it retains the core of the novel. However, this novel has a very strong, I guess, emotional center in its, uh, its, its main protagonist, Alex, who narrates the entire book and then also narrates the entire film. He's a very strong voice and presence throughout this work, which the kid is not 
in uh, Blood Meridian. But then you have something like Watchmen, which was considered unadaptable for a long time, not only because of the scope, but also because of the difficulty and the violence and the nuance of the story. I know that there are mixed feelings on the Zack Snyder film and lots of Watchmen fans have been mad for years that there's no like squid and Alan Moore will never watch the movie or whatever. But myself personally, I think the Watchmen film is a pretty solid adaptation. Uh, probably one of the most faithful comic adaptations there are. And I know people are going to be mad I said that because there's no fucking squid and all these other things. But, like, I think that film really retains the core story and ideas and themes of the graphic novel. And visually, it's very faithful. And to be clear, I'm talking about the extended cut. That's a, This is an example of an unadaptable book that I think actually was adapted. But again, this has very strong characters that the reader can latch onto and pretty concrete themes and uh, uh, messages and questions that it raises, whereas Blood Meridian is so much more abstract. This book right here, House of Leaves by Mark Z. Uh, uh, Danielewski, probably saying that wrong, my apologies, sir. I think if I had to choose one book that is 100% unadaptable, it would be this one. The structure of this is insane, even for a novel. Half of the book is told through footnotes. It's not in order, you've gotta flip around like and then flip back, turn the book upside down. If you're not good at solving puzzles, you're not going to know what's going on in this book, which was the case for me. Um, this is an impossible text to adapt, at least faithfully. Yet the structure is what makes it so interesting. This has a strong, very vocal protagonist, Johnny Truant. He's unreliable, not that that matters, but he's present throughout most of the book, saying things and writing things. Everything stems from him and his mind, yet the, the way he writes his story and the unreliability of it and the structure makes this impossible to adapt without losing everything that makes the book so special. This is something that I think should absolutely never, ever, ever be touched by somebody with a camera in their hands, ever. This is one book that I think is genuinely unadaptable. Another difficult book to adapt would be uh, 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. Not impossible, but the scale of this is unadaptable. The content is abstract and unadaptable, but it has strong characters and a strong moral center despite being so bizarre. I think this is one that fits kind of into the Watchmen category and the road category of parentheses unadaptable, but could be done. It's just not something that I would really want to try, and I don't really see this ever being attempted. This would definitely work better also like as a series than as a as a film. And another one that I think actually is probably generally unadaptable that couldn't be done successfully is Infinite Jest. Because similar to House of Leaves, a large part of the story is told in footnotes and require flipping back and forth. The order of this novel is, to call it non-linear would be an understatement. It's like in circles and things are tied together and it's just an absolutely insane novel from a structural standpoint, despite having strong characters and strong moral centers. And the similar thing goes for something like Love Medicine by Louise Erdrich, which might have you wondering, what does any of that have to do with Blood Meridian? Well, I kind of wanted to set that up as a preface to give my final verdict on whether or not I think the book is actually unadaptable. I know I sort of answered this question a little bit at the beginning, but as far as unadaptable texts go, I think this is pretty, close to being impossible to successfully adapt like i think it could be done but i think that no matter what you're always going to lose something from this text when trying to adapt it and i know that a lot of people feel that an adaptation inherently loses something of the original text no matter how good it is i don't really think that has to be true but i think that there's always going to be a piece of this book that is missing when it's turned to a film simply because so much of it has to take place in your own mind your own assessment your own reading between the lines between the text um, most of this book happens in the in the white space where there are no words and that's the case for a lot of great novels such as the sound and the fury and the brilliance of it comes from the decoding of the puzzles that the text presents to you and a film just can't work as effectively that way, partly due to the nature of cinematic storytelling, but also due to the expectation of film-going audiences. Yes, you can have unanswered questions and puzzles and twists in films, and you can tell your movie backwards like in Memento or something, but I think that cinema fundamentally more so than literature requires answers and something that is easy for us to connect to, whereas books, people are usually looking to get lost in films oftentimes have audiences that are looking to find themselves in with all that said if slash when the blood meridian film is actually released will i be seeing an opening night i mean yeah 
obviously. I also think it's important to note that we're entering an age of storytelling where we can do incredible and crazy and unique things both in film and in television and on streaming. So if there's ever a time for a lot of these unadaptable texts to actually be faithfully adapted and successfully adapted, I think this is probably it. There's lots of exciting things happening and exciting people working out there. Uh, for instance, Noah Baumbach recently adapted White Noise by Don DeLillo, a book that I would have considered unadaptable, and yet I think he totally knocked it out of the park. So it is possible, and uh, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this and your opinions on what does or does not make something unadaptable. So with all that said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I will see you um, next time. Bye.